Hi, so at the end of last video, I left you with this question and we'll go through the answer here. So why are the areas of the brain that receive information from the lips or the fingertips larger than those that get information from the backs of the legs? And this goes back to that um, sensory homonucleus weird looking picture guy. And, and this just shows that the more receptors there are, the more information there is and the more neurons that we need. So it's just a larger area. So these are some really cool topics that we're gonna go through. Um, the brain has the ability to make changes and we're gonna go through these three individually. So the first is plasticity. Um, and this is the ability of the brain to remap itself based on experiences you had. So previously we kind of used to think that the brain was determined based on your genetics and whatever your genetics said is what your brain was going to do and that's like your intelligence and your personality etc. However, we have recently come to realize that your brain isn't completely determined by your genetics. So for example, um, someone who loses their fingers, their brain no longer needs those neurons to get sensation and for motor movement. So those neurons are remodeled and they're reused for other places. So I think a lot of us have heard like, oh, individuals who are blind have a heightened sense of hearing or smell. And that can be completely true depending on the situation of how that happened. The other thing with this is um, kind of a use it or lose it mentality. So individuals who are aging and do a lot of crossword puzzles and a lot of brain teaser kind of things might have a continued development of their brain versus individuals who stop using their brain and kind of just slug slug on the TV and watch shows all day, um, part of their brain might start to kind of disappear. Next we'll talk about habituation. So habituation is a decreased responsiveness to repetitive stimulation. So for example, um, someone who lives near the airport, they will get stimulation that there's an airplane flying over them and it's really loud and it wakes them up. Three weeks later, same airplane goes by, but they don't even notice because they're habituated to it. There's a decreased response after they've been um, exposed to it several times. The opposite of that is sensitization. So with sensitization, um, this is an increased response to the stimuli. So. Um, for example, if you um, live by the airport and you have no response and then you come back and the first day back you might have an increased response. So normally you would have little or none but you have the same stimulus and you would get a big response. Another example of this is like if you date someone that chews really loudly or something Initially, that chewing wouldn't really bother you, but as you get sensitized to it, you get a big response. Um, my third example for this is like parents who have a newborn. Um, normally, they wouldn't really respond to a really faint baby cry, but once they get sensitized to that stimulus, they would have a big response to a baby crying. Okay, so that's basically it for this unit. Um, go through the slides, send me questions, send each other questions, post questions online, whatever you would like to do. Make sure you complete your in-class assignments. Um, and then there is a review posted online. So make sure you go through that study guide and kind of prepare for your exam. Good luck.